Let's start today. Thanks uh, everyone for joining to this session. What we want to see today is what is hosted login. Okay. I don't know if you are familiar with hosted logins. I don't know if some one of you had fight with the login process, right? In Drupal, you know how hard is customize something in Drupal, right? Uh, about the login, pro the, the login page, the login form, and is even the user journey. Okay, so today I'm going to show you an easy way with no code, with no implementation, nothing you have to do, just clicking buttons. Okay, this is something that we like. <clears throat> but before, let me introduce myself. This is me. Uh, in the top, it's, that's me, my lovely dog, my lovely daughter, and also my wife. Uh, some people say that the picture on the top is Photoshop. That's not true. Okay, that's me. <laughs> Uh, I'm a system lead working and, and also software uh, architect working in Omega. But as a, but then my client, the client where I'm working is actually bearing in the hand. This is a, one of the big companies, uh, pharma companies in the world. We're in the top three, top fives, depending on the year. And, and uh, we are a massive company. I'm leaving, I'm coming from Barcelona. Okay, I'm leaving there actually. I'm over 10 years working in Drupal. Over 10, actually, I met 10 years this, this year. I like to ride in bicycle. I give you some links, okay, if you want to find me out. Uh, the LinkedIn, the Drupal profile, and also the Omega, my company, who is sponsoring my Coco. <laughs> um, I'm also the president. Ah, something I didn't say. Uh, today, I'm 38. Keep that in mind. Uh, I'm also the president of Drupal Eros. Okay, this is a Spanish-speaking community that we have around the world. We, our objective is get some new people to Drupal. Okay, that's something um, something hard. Okay, the, the, we have a lot of initiatives. If you want to join, uh, you, if you want to come even to our sessions that we have, we do in Spanish. Okay, but if you want to learn Drupal and learn Spanish, you can even join. Okay. <laughs> We actually help people also to join. Uh, I give you the links uh, for all of this. Uh, if you want to sponsorize us, also come to me after, and I and I tell you how to do it. Okay. Also, yesterday we created a new Slack channel in Drupal. Okay. If you if you want to join, it's uh, this is the more global one, not not the Spanish. Okay. This is for all the people in Drupal uh, to try to get some new blood. Okay, so if you want to help us to bring some new people to the Drupal community, uh, join to that Slack, okay, and we can work this year and, and the rest, okay? So let's see, what is say I'm 38? Because tomorrow is my birthday. Uh, yes, yes, instead of being with my family. <laughs> Instead to be with my family, I win my other family, okay? <laughs> so it's 39. So if you see me around, wish me birthday, okay? <laughs> Uh, let's say what we're gonna see today. It's uh, I'm gonna introduce you what is identity means. Okay, what hosted login means. I'm gonna show you how easy it's implemented. Uh, the advanced future that we have with using hosted login and what's the future. You're gonna enjoy that. Believe me. If you don't know what is that, <laughs> you wanna you wanna love it. Um, identity. One of the big deals that we have on the internet is what identity means. Okay, so if I ask you guys, I'm for sure I'm gonna get different answers for all of you. Because identity is something that is not well defined on the internet, is not well, we don't have a clear, um, let's say, definition in the internet about what identity means, and it's something complex. Okay, if I ask, for example, just to give you some, some example, for instance, um, if I ask to bank account IT, that guy gonna tell me that identity means the bank account name. If I ask phone uh, company, the identity will be based on the phone name of the user. So it's a very different things, and it's super complex to know. For example, for us, uh, the pharma companies, the identity is based on the uh, national document, doctor document that all the doctors have seen around the world. So for us, the identity is based on that number. So it's super hard, you know, across the companies, across the, 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 the business to find what I mean, the, uh, identity means. But we found this on Wikipedia and we love it. Okay, we actually try to, for, for, not for this slide, because I'm doing this uh, this session in another, uh, for another technologies. And it was hard the first time to define what actually means the, um, Identity, identity. Okay, what actually means? So we found that in Wikipedia. We love it, and we split the world. Okay, so identity is an information that the computer, the system computer, used to represent an external agent. Maybe pff, doesn't say anything to you, but you're gonna see how important that is. That okay? So 
first thing, the first question you have to ask is, how can I build my own identity for my own company, okay? So we, the, 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 link, the list is very long, okay? But me and my team, we try to find a, a few points, okay? The most important, actually, to, to, to put it in 40 minutes, okay? And, and see what's the best way to, or what's the best definition of how to create, a, a, how to build one identity, okay? The first thing is know what kind of data you need from your user. That's very important, because many people, when go to find, try to create or build one identity, doesn't ask themselves what they need from their users. Okay, that's pretty, pretty important. So you, you cannot create an identity without thinking before what actually needs from, you, from your user. No? If I'm a bank account, uh, what I need? I need the username, I need the user ID, I need the bank ID, I need a lot of things, right? So you need to make sure that you have all the, all the data from your users. Actually, you have to keep in mind something, guys. If you don't ask that data at the first time, get that data after, it's super, super complex, okay? It's super complex, because it implies a lot of things, okay? But if I, the person who claimed to be, okay, that's super important. This happens right now, guys. It is, if you go around the website, how many websites have been hacked, you know, and anyone can join being like you, right? And using the website like you are. So you have to make sure that when someone comes to your website, to your application, you know who is that guy, okay? Uh, ensure the level of security, okay? So you have to put the high level of security. This is something that no one takes care, okay? But when you get hacked in your website, what the first thing that the hacker does, they, they, what the hacker do is they come, send you an email and say, okay, I'm gonna send a Viagra email to all your, to all your um, users if you don't pay. Right? So that's super important. I saw la last week actually in Spain, we got a news from one big company where they were saying that um, we had to change all our passwords because they've been hacked and they took all our passwords. So we have a big problem with that because if it's that easy, um, who guarantee our identity? Okay, our identity is super important in the internet. Uh, and so the level of security okay, uh, about the authentication, that's super important too. Uh, it's not only safe, it's only validate who is that guy. Uh, it's not only put a password, okay? User password is super easy to hack, okay? Some, someone here for sure can hack some, 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 um, some account. So make it super strong is the, uh, is the way, okay? Uh, guarantee we store this, the, 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 the data in the safe place. This is super important. To, oh, these topics are super important, all of them, okay? Um, guarantee uh, if you can access to any uh, database, okay? It's, it's, it's stupid to have an identity there, okay? Has to be super secure. And also, and also, and also, Complain with uh, comply the protection laws. Okay, you, we have different. Uh, in my company, we work in with all the countries around the world. So all the countries has different, you know, different laws, different ways to work with identity. In USA, for example, you have to save the data in USA. In Europe, you have to save the data uh, inside Europe. You know, it's a bit complicated. But let's see. What hosted login is? Actually, the term of hosted login it doesn't exist right in the internet, okay? Um, there are few few vendors who use hosted login as a, as a brand, okay? But the thing is, we like to use hosted login. This is actually not, not a standardized process, okay? So I'm trying to push to standardize this process and call it hosted login. Why? Because hosted login is easy to remember and actually says what it does, okay? <laughs> That's super easy. Um, what actually does, okay, hosted login? Actually, um, hosted login, it's a model of work, okay? As you see, uh, you can create your own hosted login or you can take some one from the vendor. I re recommend to you uh, to get some one from the vendor, okay? Don't do it by yourself, because you can do it, but it takes a long time, a lot of money. We actually try, and we decide actually to externalize this process, because it's even cheaper, okay? Uh, how that works? You have a website, you have a login, right? Um, the regular one, no, the, the one you have right now is you click in the login, you have a form, you put the, the email, password, and you log in, or some, something else, right? And you log in. Okay, so in this case, what we do is, you have the login, the login button, you click the login button, you get redirected to another page, okay? It's another external page that's provided for your vendor or by your own. And uh, there you have everything. You have the form, you have, um, I don't know, all the validation that you have, everything you want is gonna be there. 
Um, in most of the cases, you even don't have to code anything because the vendors provide everything you want. You want to see it. That's awesome. Um, then you can authorize the user. Then the, the, the ID. The, the ID provider will create the user if, it's not, if it doesn't exist, and then it gets redirected to your website. It's super transparent for your user. Actually, you can customize the form as much as you want in most of the vendors, okay? So for the user, it's completely transparent. Actually, if the user is not really, doesn't really know what, the, what is happening, actually doesn't gonna see the difference, okay? They're gonna think that they're still on the website, okay? Actually, you have a great example with ChatGPT. How many of you have logged in in ChatGPT? ChatGPT use hosted login, okay? And maybe you didn't realize that, okay? Because it's super transparent for the user, okay? It's super cool. Something very important is that one, hosted login is not social login, okay? We have a different things here, we have different points. Social login is more for login using social stuff, okay? You, have, you can log in social or, or, or Gmail, okay? You can use Facebook, you can use Twitter, you can use whatever, but you don't have the full control of the process, and even you don't have the full control of the, con the, the information that you receive from that social, okay? Uh, in hosted login, you get the full data. You have everything you need. Uh, you can set it, that in, set it up in the, in, the, in the form and save it in your database, okay? And control the full process of the login, the, the user journey, okay? So that's pretty cool. How to, why we use, uh, hosted login. This is the, the, the main important slide that you're going to see today, okay? Why we have to use? First, because we externalize the process. As I said at the beginning, uh, how many of you have been <laughs> dealing with the form processing, with the form in Drupal, try to customize, try to add new file, try to add the multi-step? I don't know if you work, guys, with marketing teams. We have a big marketing team, and they are very creative, and, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> I call the marketing team, right? And, and, and it's super hard for us to provide the better solution for them because they are super creative. They want to like things super extremes, okay? And it's hard, right? So using externalizing the process, you can make it something easy. Something easy, like I say, I don't know, HTML file with CSS, JavaScript, and do whatever you want there marketing team, okay? So that is that easy. Then, have all the data in a safe place. That's a cool thing. That is coming with also the, the, next, the next point. Uh, we're gonna have in a different database, okay? We can match it together, but you know, I don't recommend them. That um, you can have a different database, okay? Uh, to store all the user data that you have. Okay, that's also pretty cool. Because if you get half, that's the next point. If you get half your website, okay, I don't, Care. Okay, if you send me an email and say, uh, well, I don't care, no, but I don't care because uh, if you ask me to pay uh, to recover all the users, do it. You're going to find some surprise in the database because I anonymize all my users in my database in Drupal. So I only use the Drupal database to use the Drupal core. That's all. If you, if you go to the database, you're going to see something like 1235 at example.com, 1abc at example.com. So I don't try to send an email, I don't care, because I have the real data. It's stored in my own database, it's in another database, okay, in my vendor database. So that's pretty cool. Another thing is uh, we can work by default, guys. That's super important, by default, single sign-on. How many of you try to implement a single sign-on system in your company? Did you try ever? I did, and it's super, super, super complicated. It implies a lot of things, security things, marketing things, shit things, you know, a lot of things. So here, you have single sign-on by default. If you know what mean, single sign-on means, um, it's basically that you can log in, okay, in all your websites uh, using the same session, okay? So that's pretty good. You can share the session, the user session, across the website, or your websites, okay? Uh, so that's super cool. Uh, easy to implement the new futures market. You're gonna see a lot of futures. I'm gonna show you now a lot of futures. Uh, if you <laughs> make if you can have an idea how long it takes to implement only one functionality, you're going to see the full list that we have here. If you have to implement all of them, you're going to say, OK, no, I externalize the process, because it's pretty cool. And also, it helps for marketing uh, team. Uh, improve the UX, uh, the user experience, that's also cool. You're going to see the user experience, super cool, because uh, you don't need, we actually hate password, okay? We are fighting inside bearing it to remove all the password as much as possible and use another technologies, like 
like uh, one time code, one time link, uh, pass key that the surplus at the end. So we have different different uh, solutions rather than use password. Okay, because password is easy to hack. Uh, easy to integrate with social login. This is why I say this is different. So you can integrate social login in hosted login. Uh, you have endpoints to manage your application. So if you need to do something else, okay, something complex, or you want to integrate that better with your application, you can put some code. You have your endpoints and your API and do whatever you want. And you have this is the main difference with uh, social login. You have a man you have a backend where you can manage the user data. You can export the data, you can see the data, you can do whatever. Social login doesn't give you that. Okay, the social login doesn't say, okay, that user exists. Um, pff, I guarantee that this user it's it's validated somehow and leave it <laughs> leave, leave it coming. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let me show you quickly how that works. Okay, don't blink because you miss it. Okay, super fast. As you see, you are you are seeing now the, the uh, how to enable the module. We are using uh, OpenID uh, module. You have different protocols. We like this because this is super secure and super easy to use. Uh, you enable the OpenID uh, Connect module. You go to config. Um, you enable. Uh, th this is the old one, okay? But you put the, the endpoints. Don't worry about the endpoints and clients ID because we remove that. So <laughs> try to access, but you're not gonna get that. Uh, so you put the client ID, you put the client secret, you put the endpoints, everything is provided by your vendor, okay? You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to know actually what the hell is happening because everything is provided by your vendor. Okay, so see, see click the button the login. This is the, the login button, right? Uh, you put your email. Uh, this is actually a, web, a Drupal was, ah, you are in, shit, that fast. How long it take? 40 seconds. To implement this, 40 seconds. Are uh, you see? You see? You are in, you are validated, you are actually sign up, you are signing, you do whatever you want and it's super easy to implement. Of course, I'm, I'm not showing you the vendor part, but the vendor part is that easy, okay? It depends on the vendor you choose, okay? But it's that easy. It's go to somewhere, <laughs> create one tenant, and put your, some configuration that you have to put and it's that easy. You see, you are in, and you are, it is, this is super secure, but we use password in this case, right? Why? Because we have advanced filters. In advanced filters, we have different things. This is one of my favorite ones, uh, mostly for marketing teams, okay? Um, this is the progressive profiling. Progressive profiling, uh, I'm gonna say something. Not all the filters that you're gonna see here are provided for all, all the vendors, okay? <clears throat> This is all the features that our main vendor provide to us, but we saw that different vendor provide something similar, okay? Proxy profiling, what that means? Imagine that you have a long, long form for registered users, okay? What happened? The people won't see that, the user won't see that, there's a login, doesn't sign up, okay? Because doesn't want to fill up that amount of fields in your form, right? So what we do? We do the first punch, okay? It's super easy. Put me your email, put me somewhere else, okay? And, ask, and I will ask you the next time uh, in your website, I'm gonna ask you extra data, okay? The extra data that I need from you. That has another benefit, because um, this is something that we use a lot in Beringer, that imagine, that we are using um, another three-party uh, tool to validate the users. So we have a, like a CRM, okay, with uh, all the doctors that we have here working uh, for Beringer or not working, no, in, in, in Beringer. Um, and we have um, that list in our CRM, okay? And we have already some data of that doctors. No, not all the data, but most of the cases we have 99 percent of the of the of the information no, no, coming from the doctor so if you come to the website and um you need an extra data you can get this in your in your um in your website in your website side in drupal site okay and do whatever you want you can call the, API, the the crm using the apis and say okay this is what i have um this is the doctor that tried to contact do we have some information yes okay this field i'm not going to show you uh this field i'm not going to show up this field, I'm not gonna show up. So at the end, one form of 10 fields, it's gonna become in two, three fields. So it's easy, it's easy to implement. Imagine, <laughs> imagine how long it will take to implement this in Drupal by default. That's super, super hard, I tell you now, because we tried. This is why we're using this. Let me show you quickly, okay, how that works. So we have a, a Drupal website, so you click on generic, uh, you come here, uh, you try to register, okay, that's super easy. You ask uh, email and password. 
I'm, I'm going to show you password because I want to improve you. I want to impress you next in the next slide. Okay. So you see here, uh, I'm asked for the terms and condition. Accept terms and condition. This is the Drupal side. Okay, you are already logged in, and we have already the log the, the, the terms and condition stored. You don't believe me? I show you. The, here is it. Terms and condition is there safe. This is the vendor side. Okay. This is uh, actually. Uh, something that the vendor provide. I have all the information you see, testing the email, the one is logging, when everything, and I have the user metadata, terms and conditions, check, right? So the same thing, you can ask the address, you can ask whatever you want, you can store there. And it's super safe, because it's not in Drupal. Actually, I, I forgot to put it, but if I go to Drupal, the unique thing you're gonna see is a, pff, do me, a dummy user. And you're never gonna know what the hell is that, okay? Because everything is in here. Okay, that's the super thing. Fingerprint. Fingerprint is actually something uh, that has been changed, okay? Because uh, uh, this is another, another solution that we are trying to use, but uh, passkey actually replace. Uh, it's using the same protocol, so I have no um, demo to show you, okay? Because we try to update the demos, and, and I don't know why fingerprint and, and passkey are using the same protocol, so we, are, we cannot use it. But the fingerprint is exactly the same thing, okay? Instead of use the password, when you put the email, you can uh, access to your website using the fingerprint of your laptop, okay? If you have a fingerprint in your laptop, so you can. Enter. This is actually super cool because it's frictionless, high level of security, and easy to set up. You know how to how, how can we set up this? Just check one checkbox. That's all. Save it. It's working. Easy. It takes less than the other video. Okay. So imagine how easy is that, right? One time code and one time link. This is what. One of the things, one of the protocols that we use to log in users in Behringer, okay? This is the most famous one, okay? All the marketing want this, because you don't need, you don't need password. Uh, you can guarantee that the user is who claim to be, because you have the, the email. Okay, it's, it's super hard that the, 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 the user get hacked, the email, and also the password and everything, but it could happen, okay? And they give you, it give a better user experience, okay? I'm gonna show you, because I have an, a clear example of this. You're gonna see, I'm trying to log in again. Ah, let me press. I'm trying to log in again. You see, uh, I don't have password here. I click here, uh, pop -pop. Yeah, I get the code, I just copy the code, paste the code, click continue, in. Did you see any password in the process? No, you see how easy is for the user? We have here two things, one, no password, Two, we can guarantee that the user has that access to that email. Okay, it's not two-factor authentication, of course, it's just one, but we can say that this gives some extra security, right, for, for your um, accessibility to the website. Identity first, that this is one, one of the things that, I, uh, in my opinion, is gonna change the rules of the games, okay? Identity first, imagine do, that you are uh, in a big company, uh, you have, um, you have different users accessing to your applications, right? You have you are a big company, and you have two, three. Wait, let's say two. Uh, one is working, working people, okay, working from your uh, uh, company. You have an external people worker in your company, and you have the regular user, okay? You have someone coming from Google to show you uh, on, on 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 Google some search and access to your website and try to access. Okay, what happened? You're gonna give the same usage journey for all of them. That's something that we did in the past, but with the new. Um, New identity first, that changes the rules. Think that. If I'm a worker and I have my domain, my company domain, right? Like example.com, and my company is example.com, okay? So I come, I put my name, Raul at example.com. Uh, then I'm using in example.com, <laughs> oh, I'm using, um, for example, Azure, okay? To validate, I have a big CRM, Azure, or another provider, uh, who allow me to access, okay, to the website. So I'm using Azure. So for all the people coming from example.com, I'm gonna use Azure to connect, okay, to leave access the user. If I want, for example, someone else come from Gmail, okay, I'm gonna use Gmail solution, okay, to access to the website. If someone else come and I don't know who they are, I can put a one-time code or social login or whatever you want, or password, even password if you want. Okay, I show you. Have a look. 
you access again, okay, this is the, the first email. I'm gonna show you with Gmail, okay, if uh, you put, um, if you put block, for example, you see it asks you a password, okay? If you put Gmail, it does, it's the same form, eh? it's the same form. It gets redirect to google.com, okay? So you can do all the redirections you want. Why? Because here, the identity is the priority. So here, the email that the user put in the form is the priority. Depend of the domain you're using, is where you're going, is, is, is it's gonna define the way, no? The, the, the journey you're gonna get during the process. So that's super cool, because you you can have the same tenant for all your application, sharing the social login, and allow and give different user journey depending of the domain. Okay, that's super cool. And we have a lot of things, okay? We have a lot of things. I'm not gonna show you all because we don't have that time, but there are, for example, two-factor authentication. No, this is something super cool that we have to use. Um, and most of the company actually are requiring this. Um, we can use two-factor authentication, just clicking buttons, okay? Uh, social integration, something that is hard sometimes, so here is super easy. We have a adaptative MFA. That's super cool too, because um, this is something that provides our vendor, and this is something, it depends on where is coming the user, I mean, the IP of that user, it will detect automatically if you need an extra double uh, factor authentication or not. Okay, that's that's super cool. Because, for example, there is any Russian in the in the session? Okay, if someone comes from Russia, you know, we know that sometimes he try to hack, right? So sorry, eh, for <laughs> but this happens in Spain sometimes. <laughs> um, so I, I can say, okay, if someone comes from Russia, from China, for Taiwan, for the, all these, um, the looks, okay, <laughs> don't get me wrong, okay, but some of the guys coming from there, and and if they come from that countries, we can say, okay, no, 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 no. I want to factor authentication to fully guarantee that the user is who claim to be. Okay? So and that's automatic. You can do you have to do nothing here. Just check one button, love check buttons, you wanna see. Uh IP throttling, that's all the thing, okay? Um Bridge, power, bridge password detection. Um one of the cool things that have if you get a vendor if uh most of them, they have 24-7 support, okay? So they have person, we have a lot of people working behind this future, this system itself, okay? So you're gonna see uh, if, if, you, if they detect something weird, the first thing that they do is send you an email, okay? The first thing is automatically, but if they detect that some account have been breached or there have been an attack or something, they always contact you and tell you, okay? To check that everything, if everything is going, no? It's going expected or not, okay? You can use different protocols. Uh, we, we use mostly OpenID Connect because it's the most uh, used protocol, okay? You have OAuth, that's the second one. OAuth and OpenID, it's pretty similar. We had SAML and we have LDP, uh, LDAP also, okay? You can also integrate it with Open Trust and Persona, or whatever, okay? Uh, at the end, this is part of the authorization. If you want to validate also the user with your CRM or with any CRM, you can uh, even, even contact, uh, even synchronize, okay? The future. Um, let me say that <laughs> when I created this slide, this was the future. Sadly, a uh, few weeks ago, um, Google launched the the, um, the passkey functionality in, in in the Chrome. Okay, that's super cool, and I'm gonna show you why. Password is whatever we saw now. It's all okay. Whatever we saw, whatever I show you right now, it's completely all. This is the new thing that is coming. The truth is, this is super new. There are some gaps, okay, because uh, Passkey is implemented not only by Google, it's only implemented by um, um, Microsoft. Apple, Apple has already implemented this year ago. With the last update, if you are using Mac, for example, or an, an iPhone, um, the same identity, it gets synchronized, okay? So you can access, you wanna see how, you can access with the same uh, profile, with the same identity, using different devices. That's pretty cool thing, okay? So here, the, the first thing is you don't need um, you don't need password. Okay, this is fully password. Well, password you need a password because you have to access some home. Okay, but the password that you need to act, to put okay to remember is the one you have to access to your laptop. Okay, it's gonna use the same password that you have in your laptop. How it does? I show you now. 
uh, fully password experience um, available for all, uh, all, the, all the devices, what I say. If you want to test it, save this, okay? Save this link. This is a, a, a link where you can fully test it, the, this functionality. It's free. Uh, it doesn't create a user, it's just to test, okay? Uh, I, I believe this was created by Google, actually for this, no? to test the, the full functionality. You want to see how that works? I'll show you. This is the same page, okay? <coughs> you put the email here, okay? This is the password uh, password key integrated in on, on, on Google. So you are the first time, you click here, uh, you put the, 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 the email, the, the you want to create the account, then you want to create the password key, okay? This is the next step. This is something that well, we, have, we are dealing with this. Then you say, wh where do you want to do it? In iCloud or in the Google one, okay? So we decide Google. Uh, we continue, here is it. You see this prompt? This prompt is coming from Mac, okay? It's not for the website, it's coming from Mac. So you are already in, uh, you have already created the user in, in this, in this uh, place, we log out. I'm gonna show you two ways. One is, again, you see now it's coming, uh, the, the identity is already created, the passkey is already created in Google, so it show up the, 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 it show the pop-up. And now you have the, the button. Yeah, the passkey button. So it's the same thing, okay? It's actually the same way. You see, again, and that's the same thing. So if you use password to access to your laptop, put that password. If you use fingerprint, fingerprint. If you use iWatch, iWatch. If you use Face ID, Face ID. If you use code to access by your phone, code. So see how powerful is that? This is actually the future. This is something that um, it's super new. Okay, they released actually our one of our vendor released this few months ago. Okay, we are still playing and we saw some gaps. Uh, Google just just released this few weeks ago, so I believe it's in beta. Well, let's say okay, because when they put something in production, we know that that's beta for us. And you can do this. You see how easy is that, how easy is to implement that? And you know how can you implement that? Just clicking one button. Just check something in the configuration of your tenant. That's, that, that's the easy ways, no? And that's all, that's all from, from today. If you want to know more about hosted login and how that works, please come to me and, 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 and ask me. If you want to know about Drupal errors, also come to me, or, or if you want to know something about uh, how to get new people to Drupal, also come to me, or Carlos, that we have there. Um, thank you, thank you to be here. Um, if you have any question, we can, we can discuss now. Um, for the survey, you have the links here. Uh, and this is the, the last phase, okay? There is no privacy without security, okay? So that's all. Thank you guys to come today. Oh. So now if you have any questions, um, okay. feel free to um, shut. One question is already online. You demonstrated storing the TNC checkbox submitted value in the user's metadata, but the checkbox was on the Drupal page. How do you define what form elements to use and put them on the Drupal page? Uh, this is actually a, a, Drupal, a, a Drupal form. It's everything integrated. So whatever you do there, it's a Drupal form. That's the, that's the good thing of the privacy profiling. It's a, you can create a Drupal, a regular Drupal form, like always you create a Drupal form. Actually, for this example, we create one uh, one manually, okay, by code. And you can take the data coming from outside, actually, the, for our vendor. Uh, actually, the vendor gives you all the data you need, and you have to give back that data with the new data store, okay, to store. So it's super easy, it's, it's, it's well Document, okay, there is no, for this case, for this profiling, you need to know how to code and how to create forms, okay, but for the rest of the things, you don't need to know even code, you know. Right. Anything else? Uh, anyone? Uh, so, this hosted login, uh, is it a module or is it just built as a concept on uh, OpenID? It's, it's a concept. It's actually a system itself. So you don't need to install any module rather than the OpenID Connect, for example, to connect to the, the disk. But this is happen outside Drupal, okay? You can integrate this to Drupal, to Salesforce, to any of them, okay? Because as soon as you use the same protocol, you can use it. Okay, but it's external. This yeah. hosted login is completely external of the Drupal. So pass key, is it also open ID or is it a uh, No, module? no, 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 that's another concept. Pass yeah. key, it's coming, it's a solution coming from the, the, the laptop, or in this case for Google Chrome. Okay, this is an external functionality. Okay, you can use it or not, that's up to you. But at the end, you have that solution there, 
if you want to implement the pop-up you saw, it's coming from the Google, not from the website. So you don't have to code anything. That's already cool. Anyone else? No. Any more? No? Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> You showed how to enable this on a new website, on new users. How would you go about enabling this on an existing database with a lot of users? Um, well, good questions. Um, that's a big deal, because uh, if you don't do it from scratch, you have to rebuild all the Drupal database. Because if you, you, you have two choices, OK? You can still use in the same database, OK? So that's fine, the, the, same, the same email, without anonymize. So you can leave the user access and the user that it's going to create in your Drupal site is going to be with the real email, OK? I'm, I don't recommend that, OK? Because if you get hacked, they can you know, uh, send email to your users or do whatever. But if the, users already is, if the user already exists and you put that, uh, that, that system you know, in your website, the, user, uh, the system recognizes that email in your database. So when the user comes, says, OK, exists that user. That is that user, OK? And, and seeing that, you know? The idea is don't, you don't have to store the user info data in your database. So if you can, exp actually, you can export that data. This is something that we do when we migrate from Drupal 7 to Drupal 9 or 10. Uh, we export the users okay, from the Drupal database, and we import that in our vendor. The, then you have already the, the users there. So the, the, user, the problem is with the passwords. Okay? We, are, we are dealing with this because uh, Drupal 7 has a very weird way of encrypting the password. Okay? It's super hard to replicate that in another system. So, um, but if you ask the user to, you know, to res the reset the password or something like that, this is the only way that we found. But yeah, you can export and import and have the same user, the same information. Thank you. Um, thank you for this presentation. Um, I had a question about uh, the external vendor that do the identification. Because I see, uh, from what, we, what I understood, you have that Drupal module, and you just put up the link where the identification happens. Um, is this external vendor a subscription uh, formula? So yeah. do I have to pay something yeah. to him? Mo most of the, for example, uh, we have actually three vendors in Beringer right now, OK? One of them, this is what actually you saw, it has a free part. Okay, the free part it's enough for a small company. Actually, if you come to Drupaleros.com, okay, we are using the free part. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's super easy. Actually, we are using the process profiling. If you want to test, not all of now, but if you want to test it and you want to log in, you're gonna see how it works, and that is free. Okay, but for example, the IP throttling that that's paid, mm -hmm. uh, password key right now it's paid. You know, you have some paid. Mm, let's say futures, okay, yeah. but there, is, there are also free ones. Okay, so th that is the first um, question I have or concern. And the second one is if in the near future or the far future I don't trust you anymore for whatever reason, a bridge or whatever it is, um, can I move to someone else? Is it the, some standard? Um, the, the users, you mean? The, the database? Yeah. Um, yeah, all the things that you store. Can I move it to someone else? Or you, you can export. Actually, we do a weekly a weekly export from marketing, okay? Because they want they want the user in a specific way, okay? In a CSV file um, to import in somewhere else in the CRM, and and you can export that data. You can export everything. So you have the full control of the user that you have. You can export that database and import whatever you want, okay? So you can do your CSV and that's all. Um, it's a bit related, but do you know of any good self-hosted providers? I know, <laughs> I know, but if you want, I can tell you later if you want. I don't want to give some free, free ads, you know. <laughs> Anyone? No? Okay, if any more questions pop up or some discussion, where can we find you? Online or uh, on site? At the beginning, uh, let me see. At the beginning, I put the links. Let me quickly show you. Here I see it. So I have, this is my LinkedIn, okay? Uh, this is the best way to contact me. 
Uh, Drupal OG, I'm not using that um, too much, okay? If you <laughs> email me there, I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna answer. But the LinkedIn, it's, it's, it's what I'm more you know, active. I post some things and whatever. So you can easily chat me and, and I, will, I will answer whatever you want, okay? Actually, if you see me around, you can ask me anytime, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>